Maybe think about picking up a few shifts at the Red Apple again. Or we talked about, maybe you go back to radiology school. Radiology you school? Know. You got your dream job, and I'm, I'm so close. You know, I came in second at Hilton Head. Ooh, second. Gotta get up early. You coming? In a minute. A few more drives. I appreciate he's putting in the effort to practice. You know, he's not just slouching around saying he's gonna make it. He's actually putting in the work. So I wouldn't be getting on his case too much. As long as he's in here practicing and not playing the drums. Maybe it's a sign of his passions change from day to day. He used to be in a band. They were gonna be the, the big thing. And then he moved on to something else. And then he moved on to something else. Shut the fuck up already. He should be in the ER. Could you take me to a veterinarian? Yeah, vet. Like in the movies, because they're also a doctor, just for animals. Yeah, yeah, the movies. You need to go to the hospital. <sighs> yeah, you gotta go to the hospital. Burns like that, you're gonna get infected. How you doing back there? This is the second time she's been cuffed. Oh, it's a cop car. Maybe it's just a coincidence. We're gonna have to kill a cop. No, oh, no. What's it to be, fellas? Murder? There's a 38 in the glove box. Oh. And you don't She's going. She's going. Please. Now what? Hey. Are you okay, man? Dude, get your gun out. They're coming. Jeez. They were slow to react. Hey, look. They were so slow to react. You pull over a car. Somebody gets out of the car and starts running towards you. And you're like, uh... You okay there? Instead of taking out your gun immediately? This, this isn't the real life. <laughs> you know? If I know real life, they'd have those... those they'd be they'd be ready for anything. Some, you pull over a car and they, someone gets out. Start running towards you? Come on. You don't wait till they're past you before you... And start looking at them. <sighs> anyway, look. They were meant to die. There was no way they were going to save the day. Like, it was just never going to happen. Right? So it had to go down like this? Just seems a bit wonky, if you ask me. Wonky. Officer down! I repeat! Officer down! He's flanking him. He's flanking him. Any last words? Is he gone? Deputy Whitbar, I'm on the lamb. He's running. Evading pursuit. Watch your back. Watch your back. Don't go to the light. Do not go to the light. Don't go anywhere public. Stay in the dark. My guy, what are you doing? Oh, they're both. They're both here. Yeah, this week. We, we are out of it. Dude, what are you doing? You're standing in the light. This guy is the worst. Yeah, just stand there, right in the middle. Yeah, they will they'll never find you here. Well, how could I see him? How did I get that shot? Yeah, yeah, scissors, that'll do. I don't want this man to survive. He's too dumb. Son, get down for you lose your head. Yeah, how about you? How about a, a first aid kit? A first aid kit? They're coming. I got gotcha. you. It's okay. Yeah, it's free okay. her. Just stay calm. Backup will be here soon. Not soon oh. enough. I'll check the doors. The clerk said no back door. If I was them, I wouldn't have cut the power. These people are just going to stand in the, the brightest spot in the store anyway, so you don't need to do anything clever. They'll just run out into the into broad daylight in front of a spotlight for you, if you just wait long enough. <laughs> okay, okay. It's got to go down a certain way. It's got to go down a certain way. I know that. I know that. It's just a TV show. What you doing? What you doing? I don't know. Oil to slip.
Well, somebody got in that way, maybe. Is that you, Burn Man? This guy needs to take up an offensive, defensive position. Oh. You got any weaponry back there? Got an air horn? An air horn? A what? It might, it might do something. Oh. Don't fire at nothing, dude. Well, he just wasted all his ammo before the guy even appeared. Ugh, you're having a bad day, dude. Oh, Jesus. What a way to go. A song of fire and ice, that guy. Oh, yeah, and she's got his weapon. Any, any bullets? Maybe you can put some ice in it. Nice! Oh No, dude! He didn't even look. Be very, very careful. He got a good shot at him. He missed somehow. I know he's out. He's out. Well, it's all on Dorothy now. Yeah, that'll help. He's out of bullets, dude. It's Dorothy you gotta look out for. See? See? Hey, cop guy! We got him! We gotta keep getting him. Before he gets up. Nice. Nice. Probably just shoot him. Do you recognize him? Oh, I must have hit an artery. <laughs> Yeah, that'll do it. It's okay. Can you hold it? That second guy, by the way. Wait, he's still alive. 100%. Where'd you learn to do all this? It's not my first getaway. Where's the second fella? I don't know. My friend door. Took off. He's gone. Like Michael, Michael Myers. You know how it goes. I'm putting you in for a medal when this is over. As long as you stay alive, dude. Is she gone? Oh, it's not. We're not done yet. We're back at the pumpkin house. Hey, honey, do you want donuts for supper? It's all I know how to buy you. How about we read a story about? Uh, gonna read his mom's autobiography to you. We're gonna get her back. Go out there and get her, dude. I want to see some character arc from him. Becomes a badass. Uh, dude. Prowler. Potentially your wife is home. There she is. Good job, dude. You found her. Yeah, grab a weapon. Grab a weapon. Go get her. You, you're the hero now. Yeah, making making those pancakes. Dude, do you think a prowler is making pancakes? <gasps> Hiya, hon. Oh, jeez, you're bleeding. I am? Well, what the heck happened? She's in shock. I just must have cut myself is all. You know, yesterday was a tough pill to swallow. So I thought I could go somewhere, clear my head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's lost what? it. The, the ski mask all scorched and stuff? Uh, I had some of the winter things out. I guess I must have put them too close to the curlers. Oh, right. She's, she hasn't lost it. She hasn't lost it. She just doesn't want an investigation into it. But there will be. Because the, the man, the police officer, and the other guy's there in the... He's, he's taking a dump. You know? He's dead. So they got one dead body. The other guy took off, but they got one dead body. And a cop, and he can identify her. She's not gonna sweep this. I thought she was. She had lost her brain, but I presume she just doesn't want. She recognized the guy. Maybe she recognized what's going on. She's just like, oh shit, it's my past. Come back to haunt me. Let's hope there's no investigation about that. I won't be pressing charges. Let's just drop it, shall we? Just a misunderstanding. I was just just here. Just a misunderstanding. Don't look into it. Because the cops were here, uh, that, that, that Indian lady, and she said, uh, 
Indian lady. And, and then I met my mom's figure out a ransom strategy. You told your mom? He tells her everything. You were abducted. Stop saying that. I had a bad day. I needed some time to clear my head. But you know, even I got a breaking point. You don't want to see her when she's up against it, dude. She's resourceful. There's probably an annulment clause. You know your mother would have put that in. Now, you want to set the table for breakfast? It, Gotta make sure Scotty gets her vitamins and minerals for school. It's 2 a.m. Most important meal of the day? It's, it's 2 a.m. You gotta get your nutrients, you know? It's a twister, Dorothy. A twister. Jennifer Jason Lee, that's who it is. Where do I know her from? Wait, Joe Curie. No. Joe Curie's Steve from... From Stranger Things. What? He wasn't in this episode. Maybe we haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I just went back to look at the uh, the scene at the farm place. Joe Curie's in that. He's sitting at the table. There's a there's a vibe from that scene. We we have no dialogue. It's barely on screen for five seconds. You get the the feeling that the head of the table is someone not to be trifled with, and perhaps based on the context we get uh, in this episode, Dorothy has run away from that life run away from her life there and she's completely in hiding from them and I suspect that when she got her prints taken and she went into the system the people who are looking from her from from that have found her she they got flagged they were like oh all these years we've been looking for her they sent two guys to get her alive very quickly so uh they failed, at least their first attempt, and she doesn't want to think about it. She does not want to deal with it. She doesn't want to think about it. She wants to stay undercover. I don't know what she's thinking, though, because if they found her, if they found her, they know where she is. She's got to get out of there. If she wants to be permanently gone away from, if, if the story I've made up in my head is true, then she needs to move. She needs to take her, her child and leave, you know? Oh, that's where I know him from. I knew uh, the cop's husband, Mr. Golf. I knew I'd seen him before. He was in The White Lotus. I knew we'd seen him before. What I can, what I'll say about the first episode is that it's, it's pretty classic Fargo. It's exactly if you were if you planted me down, take away the accents, but planted me down in the show, and didn't tell me what the title was. And tell me, what is this What is this show that you're watching? I'd be like, it's Fargo. 100% it's Fargo. Because there's a, a, a comedy, a certain type of comedy is in this show that is, doesn't exist in other shows. It's a very particular type that I can't describe to you. But it's, this episode just emanates. It just, it exudes it from all its, all its pores. Uh, from the the comedy of the kidnapping, the fact that the one of them was inept, <laughs> sort of, he seemed new to the job. One of them was quiet and calculated, still out there. Uh, you know, that she was able to fight back. And even her speaking up in the car, you know, about his... His facial wound. She got him though in the end, didn't she? With the ice. And then the toilet seat really got him. That cop though. The cop that... One seemed oblivious when there's somebody running at him from a car he's just pulled over. But forget about that part. When he runs to the, the most well-lit... You know, there's two guys with guns coming to kill him dead. He runs off into a field in the middle of the night. Great. They can't see you. They'll never find you. You're safe until backup arrives. What does he do? He goes for the most well-lit building in the vicinity. 
that's that's bad enough, right? What I would change about the episode as it is, one, he wouldn't have run there, but if he had to run there, shoot him as he's running into the building. You know, he doesn't stop running, he's running, he's running, he's going straight to the building, get him in the leg. Oh, crap, they're still out there. They see him, they're following. That would be fine. But don't have him stop when he gets to the well-lit place. Turn around and look into the darkness and just stand there like a like target practice. What is he doing at that moment? What is he doing? You know, guarding the place because the girl ran in there? Stand around like a fool is what he's doing. He survived. But he should not have. <laughs> they got one good good shot at him. You know, I, I don't know what was going through his head right then. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. And then once you get inside, you got to take up a position where you can see. He did. He did eventually take up a position where you can see the, the entrances. And where you were obscured from view. You know, tactical. Hey, air horn guy. You can come up and distract him with your air horn, but don't, don't stand up with it you know lift it in conjunction with the cop who's gonna you know they give you a signal you distract him i'll shoot him guy turns or although he didn't turn for the sound at all he was just like (laughs) then the cop shoots him dead 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 we have to rely on dorothy the world's most resilient woman to get him she got everybody she's a killing machine you know we saw that in the first scene uh, with her with her child there's something there may or may not be something going on with their daughter as far as gender is concerned I d- that's not I'm not going to say there is I'm just going to say that there might be her name is Scotty But she didn't want to wear a dress. There was something. It's something there. Maybe. They might not draw attention to it. It might just be nothing. So we'll just say it's nothing until it's something. Just that it was obviously something they pointed out. But didn't really talk about. And then I was just listening to the words they were using. You know, slugger and all sorts of things. I was kind of reading into things there. But I'm not going to read into it until... We need to. And we'll never need to. Just just in case they, it becomes a thing. I noticed it. You noticed it. Uh, golf man. He's funny. I'm, I'm all the... I'm 100% behind this guy's career. He's put, putting in the practice. He has to put up with all the nagging. But he's going to keep going. When she's like, hey, do you want to come? You know, you're done? He's like, no. I finished second. If I want to finish first, I got to keep swinging. You know? He's not going to get better through radiology. (laughs) They're having financial difficulties. Her solution, one of her solutions is for him to go back to college. That's going to put them further in debt to the, like, it's going to cost much more than the golf simulator. And sure, in five or six years, He'll be breaking in the money, you know, from all the radiology he'll be doing. But right now what we need is cold, hard, quick injection of cash. That's what I think. So yeah, you should take up some, a few shifts at the the red lobster. You know, it might impact his practicing. But maybe it's a compromise you got to make, especially if bills are mounting up got to make a decision at that point so respect her position and respect his career decisions I don't think we're supposed to I think we're supposed to see him as a someone who's dreaming he was a failed drummer he he hung on to that that dream of being in a band for years longer than he should have and now he's a failed golfer still hanging on to his dreams and he's going nowhere he's a loser a real loser you see but I, until we see evidence of it, until it slaps me in the face, I'm going to be on on team golf guy. 
I'm on her team too. She doesn't have a case anymore though because the uh, the victim turned up just fine. She said she went for a walk. And she denies being the person in the store place, the gas station. Even though she's clearly on the security footage. And the cop can visually ID her. Uh, you know, but, you know, she says she doesn't want to press charges. You know, that's... The investigation's closed. Case closed. There is something I wanted to check. She was, look, she was looking at something when the guy was downed, right? I thought that might, might have given her a clue of who it was, but I didn't get a good enough look at it. No, it just says breakfast, the most important meal of the day. So, hey, look, maybe... Maybe she was... Maybe she has just lost it. Lost her mind. She's going to be all about breakfast from now on. You know? Breakfast this, breakfast that. Like she's in Breaking Bad. Right. That was episode one. The Tragedy of the Commons. Next episode is Trials and Tribulations. Hey, look, that's every episode of Fargo. Every single episode. The third episode is The Paradox of Intermediate Transactions. If you took me on a spaceship, why would you take, why would you do that? Again, if you were to just show me this title and say, what show is it from? I'd be like, that's from Fargo. That's obviously from Fargo. They love their titles like that. You know, season three was full of them. Season three's titles, The Law of Vacant Places, The Principle of Restricted Choice, The Law of Non-Contradiction, The Narrow Escape Problem, The House of Special Purpose. You know what I'm talking about? That paradox of intermediate transactions. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know this one should have been called breakfast and we'll come up with come up with a title for episode 2 next time too I'm enjoying the show I like the characters the mother-in-law is a bit unreal but she's formidable in that she has a lot of connections uh, we've got one of them is a pirate he's got an eye patch uh, they got a lot of guns I can see a standoff between gun family and barn family and it's all about her all about her running away from home her community she was probably arranged to be married to somebody you know and Joe Keery is either Probably her brother could be. Let's just say he's her brother until we know otherwise. And John Hamm is her father. Let's just say that. And yeah, that's that's all we got to do. We'll learn more as the show continues. Uh, thank you for joining me for Fargo. We're going to have fun with the show. I'm going to have fun with it. I'm going to praise the praiseworthy stuff. I'm going to make fun of the stupid stuff. And uh, we'll see what copyright's like on YouTube. I think there might have been problems with copyright when I put Fargo up before. And uh, we'll see. I think I, I think it got to a point where I was like, oh, Jesus, show. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. I'll see you next time for Trials and Tribulations. Take care.